folks, it's been two months. Droomies, it's been two months. You're turning the side of your milk carton around looking for our pictures. You haven't seen us. Everyone's been dropping messages in our inbox, checking how are you, trying to see if they got a COVID notification, checking their obituaries. Where are the Droomies? That has been the question. Where are the Druids? That has been the follow-up question. And here we are to answer it for you two months later with what we are billing as our phenomenal extravaganza of a season one finale, the Milwaukee Metal Fest finale. Franny, how the hell are you? I'm doing real good, baby. I'm doing real, real good. Uh, it's glad to be back, to be honest with you. It's been a little bit of a longer hiatus than we were expecting, but uh, we back, baby. We back. Well, Franny, if Jim Cornette has taught me anything, and there's always going to be wrestling references, everyone knows that at this point, but if he's taught me anything, it's that if you don't go away, how can I miss you? So we had to go away so you can fucking miss us, but we're back, and just like uh, the return of the living dead, we're here a little bit haggard, maybe with a little bit of fresh wound still healing from the Milwaukee Metal Fest, but we bring all sorts of fucking piping hot coverage on what has arguably been one of the best weekends of my life, but Franny, before we launch in to the Milwaukee Metal Fest, let's just, you know, peel back a veil of curtain, show some vulnerability, and say, you know... Folks, we're fucking humans and we're we're grinding hard on this product and we believe in this product and we know you believe in us. But we had a moment where we thought we went viral and I'm talking about black metal brain eaters. Oh, yeah. And we're getting, I don't know, Franny, what, what, what would you say, like 400 streams a day for like a week or so? Yeah, it was pretty astronomical. Like I would just sit, we were, I can't even remember, I was on vacation somewhere and then I was checking just, you know, our, our analytics, checking the stats. And then, boom, shit's exploding on the Black Metal Brain Eaters episode, and it was like 300 plays in a day. And folks, just, you know, just to be completely honest with you, we get maybe like 20 streams a day or so, something like that. Uh, we're still, we're still young. We're still fledgling. You know, we're just, we're just a, uh, still growing up in the podcast world. But to see an astronomic growth like that, yeah, it, we thought, like, shit hit the big time, and we were like, oh my god, finally catching on. And it was like 400 streams a day for like four days, and then just dropped off like a rock, and we were like, what the hell is going on here? Long story short, we got a bonanza of streams, and we think it was a bot farm, and that just sucked the wind out of our sails a little bit. We believe in this fucking product, and we're trying to grow it all the time, but just like the metal bands we love, we're in this for passion, and... You know, for a brief moment there, I was buying mink coats. I was driving around in a Rolls Royce and I'm buying that shit on layaway on fucking credit I didn't have. <laughs> and so when I realized a bot farm was behind this traffic, you know, it caused us to pause and think about how do we want to format the show to ensure sustainability? We both have jobs. We both have, you know, our own families. Some of us have geriatric fat dogs to take care of. <laughs> and... You know, we want to make sure we can do this for the long haul. So I think we're reformatting the show um, in seasons, uh, seasons being about eight to 10 episodes and then taking a little break. So right now we're going to come at you with this fucking gnarly ass finale um, and then go enjoy our goddamn summer. Because as you all know, in Minnesota, we have very short time for that. Yeah, Franny, we just have to recharge our batteries and get ready for season two. Absolutely, baby. Absolutely. And uh, let me tell you, folks, season two is going to be a fucking ripper. I mean, think about all the stuff we talked about and learned in season one. Amplify that by, like, at least, at least 3.75, and it shit's going to be crazy. We were like baseball in 1984, but coming back for season two, we're going to be 1997. Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, juiced <laughs> up, looking all the part of a fucking Billy Graham and I'm talking fi superstar Billy Graham, the wrestler, rest in peace, Hell just yeah. passed away, but juiced fucking up. And uh, Franny, just just before we launch into Milwaukee Metal Fest, I want to tease some of the content we've already plotted out so you boys know what you're going to be listening to next year. But we've got slated for you a special on the rise of Florida death metal that we're, cause, we're calling It Came From The Swamps. We're going to also explore sex and heavy metal, a little high heels and fishnet stockings, talking about heavy metal sex magic um, for all you degenerates that so thoroughly populate our streams. <laughs> Of course, we're going to have a Sam Haynes special. Uh, we're going to take a backseat view from the tour bus uh, Life on the Road episode. And we got such, friend, we got such good feedback around heavy metal 
and Home Alone being metal as fuck oh, that yeah. we've got to do another fucking Yuletide special. So yeah, that uh, yeah, we did get a lot of good feedback on that one, and I don't know if I want to say what we're doing for this one, but I'm th- fucking jacked to the bones for that one for sure. Yuletide special. Just in time, a little genre deathmatch conclusion. We've got Dungeons and Virgins, fantasy and heavy metal lined up. <laughs> and a breakdown of maybe grindcore that I like to call So I Married an Axe Murderer. Now, <laughs> don't, for the love of for the love of Dio, hold us to this. This is our forecasted content. Some of these I know are going to be a go. Other shit may adjust as time goes on. But uh, stick around. We're going to slate ourselves for, I would say, a mid to late August return. And in the meantime, we're going to enjoy fun in the sun. So with that being said, uh, Franny, Milwaukee Metal Fest. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. wow. Man, it's, it is hard to put into words the experiences uh, that we had over that weekend. And much like you said, probably one of the best weekends of my life. I echo that sentiment. Like, that was... That was truly incredible. Besides, like, me getting married, as corny as that sounds, that was legitimately one of the best weekends of my life. It was just unreal. So many amazing memories, so many amazing bands, uh, and it all got crammed into one weekend, and it's hard to believe that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, <laughs> it's truly insane. It was madness. It was hectic. It was invigorating and exciting. And yeah, man, just an absolute blast. And a shout out to the missus. If she ever streams this, you definitely answer that the correct way. But the wedding (laughs) slightly, just slightly ahead of Milwaukee. So I I fear for this man. You think we've been missing for two months? Let her hear something else on that comment. It might be a long sabbatical. (laughs) Might be a solo show after that. (laughs) Fuck. Well... If you'll recall, Droomies, before setting off to Milwaukee, we did our Metal Road Trip Survival Guide. And right out of the fucking gates, just to let you know how full of shit I am, how full of shit Franny is, I'm going to let you know, we completely forgot every single piece of truth we dropped in that episode. We forgot that you don't eat gas station food. And I'll even, I'll go even further. When I tell you we were eating gas station food, I'm talking four hour old dried out chicken nuggets i'm talking uh wasabi <laughs> peanuts that are two years past due i'm talking an olestra dripping grease bomb of a burrito we got all the gross food but franny i'm like embarrassed to say quick trip is kind of nice <laughs> oh I, t- I i i have gone on record in the past and i will go on record again if you have to get gas station food if you have to Make sure it's a fucking quick trip because that is like the gourmet level of gas station foods as far as gas station foods go. Quick trip is the best. I uh, just put that out there. Putting it out there on Front Street. Well, the thing about the gas station food, too, is we know that it's going to get your system moving because it's 98% grease. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. But Franny, I don't want to, I, I do want to put your shit on blast here. Because you broke one of the cardinal rules of going to even a fucking show, let alone festival. You did not take a shit beforehand. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was so worried about that, too. I was genuinely worried about that. Like, you picked me up in the morning. I tried to get I tried to fire one off before you You picked picked me up up in the morning. (laughs) And I just couldn't I, I couldn't make it happen. I couldn't make it happen. And then we get to the Airbnb, and I'm just like, okay, I am for sure going to have to go. Nope, didn't have to do it. And then I got real scared because I was like, great, now I'm going to have to go to take a, take a power dump at the venue. And it didn't happen. I couldn't believe it. I went the whole day, no problems at all. I was scared as hell the whole time, walking on pins and needles and eggshells, terrified. Franny had to take a shit. He, despite the gas station food, maybe it didn't have, Let's Let's take a fucking listen. <laughs> First 90 minutes of this trip, and it's just been revealed that Franny has not taken a shit before the show. He's currently bulging at the sides like an about to burst bratwurst, and he's sweating. It remains to be seen whether or not he'll shit inside the club, but we're following this plot closely as the day unfolds and the weekend unfurls here at the DoD. Literally five minutes later. Franny has now pulled over to a rest stop someplace between Sheboygan and Eau Claire. He's looking sweaty. He's looking around, seeing who's might be watching him. He's going to take a shit in a truck stop, rest stop, and I'm here for it. 
He's <laughs> either you can stay and pay yourself. Fecal Gate 2023 getting a live update. Did that five year old prevent you from shitting? It was so bad. I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Oh, fuck, oh, man. Shit. This shit. A little $40 recorder we brought to the fucking festival <laughs> gave us golden moments. So this is a little bit kind of a different episode. We're going to try to splice an audio. So we want to we want to bring you along with us. So you're going to get these sort of updates the whole show. We're going to see how this goes. Franny's just busting up over there remembering <laughs> what a disaster that first trip out there oh, was. Oh, God. Oh, God. It really was. <laughs> Well, one thing I thought was kind of cool with the drive out there is, uh, you know, Might House, who uh, was the biggest motherfucker you could ever meet. We're calling him Might House because he's six foot, I don't know, seven, about 382 of sheer muscle. And, um, you know, tall as a lighthouse, but but thicker, like peanut yeah. butter in the fridge. So we're calling him Might House. But he, Might House, House, he brings an iPod with him. And this iPod is loaded with music all from like 10 years ago. And it was like a really cool way to feel nostalgic. And we had some just fantastic music on the way out there. But shout out to Might House and uh, just the concept of rolling with a time capsule iPod. I thought that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, that was wild, man. That was really crazy. And not only that, but I got to hear a bunch of bands that I never heard before in my life. Like shout out to like Devil's Blood. I heard that for the first time, and it was incredible. It was just incredible. And then God dethroned, like, Jesus H, that blew me away. But, yeah, that, all in all, that was uh, that was pretty cool to take a step back in time into Might House's life and see what he was listening to back then. Well, then as long has been reported, at this point, if you're riding with us on our season one finale, you know that the Rave Eagles Club in Milwaukee was where this festival was going down. And this the, the show itself was really interesting because... Freddie, they've got like three different stages of different sizes. You've got a main stage. It's like a big ass ballroom. You've mm -hmm. got a more intimate pub sized floor. And then you've got kind of a, a larger venue that's not quite the size of the ballroom, but is just right for a national touring act. So we had a good variety of venues inside the venue. That was wild. We're running around like pinballs, bouncing back and forth all three days. What did you think about that? Oh man, it was, it was, I, I enjoyed the setup, but yeah, like you said, running around like chickens with our heads cut off, just trying to, you know, ca catch a little bit of this band, but then we got to leave a little bit early to go see this band. And then we got to go up like four flights of stairs to get to the ballroom to ch catch this band. And then we got to go all the way back down the said stairs just to see, you know, this another smaller band in the, in, in the small, uh, the smallest venue they had. It was a lot of running around, and by the end of the days, like I was, I was shot just just from the running around alone. Let alone like all the music that was going on. But it was an uh, interesting layout for sure. You know, I kind of held up. Uh, I held up better than I expected running between these venues, and part of that I attribute to a, dec a clutch decision that both uh, me and Might House made, and that was to wear thick ass high top old lady white Reebok. High tops, straight out of 1988. <laughs> and that shit was dispersing my weight across my spine in a proper fucking way. So I wasn't like, I was so expected to be like hanging off the side of a rail by the end of the first night. Cause I have flat ass feet like a Flintstones character, but oh, Franny, yeah. the fucking high top Reeboks worked. Yeah. I just wish I would have, uh, when, when shoe shopping before, beforehand and did the same thing. Cause the first night I wore my, my battle boots and uh, that fucked me up pretty good. But then day two and three, I wore my Crocs uh, just on a whim. And uh, <laughs> it, came, it actually worked out, man. Like, I was all right this after that. This fuck, if you had told me in advance that, that Might House and I would both buy high top white Reeboks and wear them. If you had told me that was the most ridiculous footwear choice of the three of us, I would have believed you until I saw the Crocs. <laughs> They came in clutch, though, man. They came in clutch. I put them in sport mode, and it was it was golden the whole time. <laughs> sport mode. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about other clutch accoutrements later, but we made a lot of critical decisions that all aided towards a fantastic time. Things that would, if we re-recorded Concert Survival, would now be part of that show. But we're going to talk about that more to come. Um, so we liked the venue. A pretty good sound overall. I preferred the smaller stages. I had my best times at the two smaller stages. So if I was 
um, you know, eating the porridge and trying to say this one is just right. It would have been the, that medium sized venue or that pub sized venue. I thought, Franny, I thought the main stage didn't sound the best, but that's okay because the bands I went to see were those smaller bands. Yeah, for the most part, I agree with you, except for uh, the the sound of the big stage. I didn't think it sounded too bad, but it uh, it, it might have been just the like the the set like the band's uh, sound crew that were setting it up or whatever. But for the most part, yeah, sure. I agree with you. the The small stage and the medium stage were were the were the money stages. That's where I had the most fun. Well, of course, we were at the Rave Eagles Club, which is just a, a stone's throw away from the Ambassador Hotel, which mm-hmm. for you death-obsessed gorehounds are well aware that that is where Jeffrey Dahmer uh, took a man's life, scummy piece of shit that Jeffrey Dahmer was. But let's let's splice in to think, uh, think about what the little true sagging elite, the TSE, has to say about staying in the Ambassador Hotel. Any burning thoughts on staying in the hotel where Jeffrey Dahmer so brutally delivered a man onto his end? An untimely end, indeed. Uh, however, I have no thoughts on it because I've stayed here many times before. And, and in fact, it influences me more to listen to Macabre and the Dahmer album, especially the track Ambassador Hotel, which is haunting. I have a thought. Jeffrey went down to the Ambassador Hotel with a young man he didn't know too well. And when he awoke, the young man was dead. And then now I'm drunk and I can't remember the rest. (laughs) Folks, this is but a taste of the lack of critical thinking that you will find down here at the Milwaukee Metal Fest. Sir, would you say that there's a chance you had just a touch of sexual fascination with the misdeeds and foul deeds of Jeffrey Dunn? Or, sir, you're staying in his room. Not a chance at all, in fact. Of sexual... Not a slight movement. Not, no. Nary, no increased blood nary, flow. Nary, n- not even a quarter chub. Nary <laughs> uh, a sexual thought flows through my mind when I think about it. I truly just think about the macabre song, Ambassador Hotel, and the haunting riff, and the funny lyrics. Se- sexuality plays no, absolute no part in this. One of the things that's always made me sad is a man in denial. And as I walk amongst the crowd, here in Milwaukee Metal Fest. It is obvious as I observe. It's obvious this place is crawling with sexual deviants. Sex, the deviants, degenerates, and deplorables abound here at Milwaukee Metal dog. Fest. Three men in a tub. Jeffrey Dahmer took showers with dead men in his tub. He was too exhausted to cut them up, so he put them in cold water. What does is that do? Lock up your daughters. Make sure you know where safe your children are because here, next Record bringing you field coverage at the Milwaukee Metal Fest, and it is pandemonium here. 2023, the year of our Lord. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> <laughs> These fucking idiots. True Sagan Elite coming in with True the Sagan hot Elite. stuff. <laughs> coming out with goddamn limericks about Jeffrey Dahmer. I wasn't the haikus from Macabre. I was not expecting that. <laughs> That was took me off guard on that one. <laughs> oh, In the shit. painting scene, where I recorded that there's a huge patio outside of the rave, and it's it's stacked with food trucks. Some of them faster than others. All of them pretty <laughs> delicious, but plenty of areas to sit. And this is Friday, even though this whole festival was really well attended. I mean, this thing was really like oh, yeah. blown out with folks friday was a little bit more low-key because some folks bought tickets for saturday and sunday when the diehards were there friday so friday we're getting off to a hot start um and part of that hot start was something that you've been talking about when you review bands as your nomenclature but i'm talking about the franny pack the franny tell us a little franny bit about pack. Yeah, tell us about how the Franny Pack came in clutch. What what is what does it mean to you to bring a Franny Pack to a festival? So uh, much like uh, Wrecker said about that's how, that's my rating convention, and I chose so because when going to a concert, the Franny Pack came in so fucking clutch. You don't have to have a bunch of shit in your pockets weighing down your 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 fresh ass shorts. You know what I mean? Getting pants when you're going into the pit or anything like that. You have all of your accoutrement that you need. 
uh, right there in your little kangaroo pouch. It's fantastic. I'm talking your phone, your wallet, your koozies, your plugs, and day two and three when, you know, Wrecker and I desperately needed it, fucking chapstick. Everything was right fucking there, easily accessible, never had to worry about losing a damn thing. It's just the most useful fucking thing between my Reeboks and between the fucking Franny Pack. I'm like, and you know, I didn't bring it, but uh, I bought a visor for football games. I just gotta say, between those three things, I now I look like a like a 58 year old power walking grandma. But I gotta say, it's because they're 58 that they have those things because it takes years of experience and trials to realize that sometimes looking goofy is being comfortable. Damn right, baby. Damn right. And I'm all about that comfort. And I am all about that comfort. I'm never going to travel without a Franny Pack to a festival again. Like, they are so fucking clutch. And the thing I loved about it is uh, I feel like I'm Ned Flanders. Like, I feel like I'm wearing <laughs> nothing at all. But, like, when you have a fucking Fanny Pack and you fill that shit with all the things you need, now you're freed up to wear the loosest gym teacher clothing that you want. So, like, I was in sweatpants with or sweat cut off sweatpants without even a concern about losing my shit. So, yeah, I didn't mean to make a fucking season one finale about MMF be about the, the, the merits of a fanny pack. But if we didn't go into this, we would be failing our droomies. Correction, correction, franny pack. It's a franny pack. It is a franny pack. That is a, <laughs> that, that is needed. You guys, droomies, listen up. Next time you go out to a festival or even just a regular concert, make sure you get you a franny pack. Again, I cannot sing the praises of these things high enough. It, they're incredible. And the, and the, in the famous words of Dwayne Elizondo, Hector Mountain Dew Camacho, in regards to a franny pack, get me one and get you one too. You're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> God, you did not do it. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, Franny, you know, going back to our best of list uh, to close out 20. 20- 22 listening we did the riffies we did the riffies our annual semi-annual always to be again annual awards to commemorate the best of 2022 well we also want to do a little bit of there's so many fucking bands of this thing like over over like 50 i don't i should know the number but a lot of fucking bands and we're not going to go into every one we're going to talk about our highlights and part of that talk is going to include giving out some awards so uh franny Wrecker and, of course, you, we are collectively presenting the Good Land Awards, sponsored by the Franny Pack Union Workers of Local 651. So, as we break down these bands, we're going to be giving out some special distinctions. All right. And, uh, yeah, there's there's going to be a couple of good ones. I know you got some picked out. I got a couple picked out, too, and I'm uh, pretty excited to hand, hand these out. So, yeah, I get once again, uh, Franny Pack Union 651. Represent! Franny, there's so much to talk about. Day one, I think, was for me the day where I was most haggard. I mean, like, it just, uh, it was just, you know, you get up early, you just get in the car, you, you try to record some audio about about Franny needing the shit, and before you know it, you're <laughs> fucking tired. And so day one, for me, was kind of a blur. But, like, when I look back, you know, Drewmies, if you haven't headed over to our Instagram in a while, check out the videos we've been posting midnight. Midnight opened this show for wow. me. Uh, they, when I say open the show, they were the first band I saw that I was like, oh boy, these boys got it. And I've been waiting to see this fucking thrash master of a Lemmy worshiper for a long time. Midnight fucking crushed. Yeah, they were, oh God, they brought the energy that we did not, that we could not muster up for ourselves. You know what I mean? Like, they, it was insane. It was genuinely insane. These boys were all over the fucking stage. I mean, they were hopping up on their stacks and everything like that, playing, you know, just shredding on top of their six foot stacks. They were like jumping in the crowd playing. It was nuts, dude. It was, it was fucking crazy. You know, and in my head, I want to believe that they smashed a really expensive guitar and got caught up in the moment because they closed out that set by smashing their fucking guitars. And you know, I got, you know, your boy got footage of it. Head over, check that video out. Currently, I don't know if the bots are getting their hands around. It looks like that shit's going viral <laughs> for a metal community. But yeah, Midnight fucking crushed. But uh, I still have to say, and Franny, I'm open to whatever bands you want to talk about, of course. But for me and you, I want to just say, I feel 
like Imperial fucking triumphant was for us. Kind of the big pop of day one. Oh, I could not agree anymore with that. There's no band that I saw that day (laughs) that was as revolutionary of an experience at a live metal setting than that. Like, that was incredible. You praise these boys in previous episodes, and I was just like, okay, I'll check them out. And I'm not going to lie, I found, like, I found listening to it at home a little challenging, but then when totally. I saw them in the live setting, holy fuck, my dudes and dudettes, holy fuck. As Wrecker has said before, if you get a chance to see these guys, do not, do not miss that chance. And they're just something different. They are different live. If you see them live, you get swept up into the current. They pull you out with this vicious riptide of experimentation. And as you take your last fucking breaths, knowing you're about to go down in the murky depths of that water and die, you are glad because it is all consuming and all enveloping them. Imperial Triumphant as a live experience. So let's go to the floor and see what we've got to say in advance of Imperial Triumphant. Here we are on the eve of Imperial Triumphant after being long touted, long hyped, long promoted as the undisputed lineal heavyweight champion of experimental heavy metal. And here I am with Franny. Franny, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I've been uh, hearing about these guys for a long time going back to episode whatever it was that we did. But I tell you what, I'm super fucking jacked to see these fuckers in person, live and uncut, ready to get some champagne toasted all over me, ready to see those beautiful gold masks all the way from New York. Let's go. Franny, you talk a big game. You seem like a man of culture, but you're drinking a Bud Light. What say you? (laughs) It's the cheapest and the gnarliest. So, you know, and Kid Rock says he hates it. So fuck him. There's no amount of druidic preparation that can prepare you for spending $13 a drink, which is what we're doing here at the Ray Beavles Club, surrounded by degenerate mouth breathers, grease hogs. Just heard about deodorant a couple weeks back, and here we are, men of enlightenment, men of knowledge, men of the renaissance, awaiting imperial triumphant and their triumphant return. Uh, like, uh, you said it, you, you couldn't have said it any better. You really couldn't have. I, I was just, like I said, I'm just excited to see these fuckers. I want champagne in and around my mouth hole. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Awaiting gilded golden showers from champagne from estates not long seen in the heart of France. We await our bubbly shower. As we await Imperial Triumphant's return, we are surrounded by roughly 200 denizens of Milwaukee, frothing at the mouth, frothing at the waist, some of them frothing from the ass. (laughs) Shout out to our Airbnb for hooking us up with a steam shower with programmable music. (laughs) Not only does it have programmable music, it has programmable lights for when you really (laughs) want to impress the ladies. Let the Drummies know I'm five drinks in. Maybe a recently legalized edible kicking in. And here I am. How the hell are you? We're so excited. I'm just happy to be here with you. We like go fucking full circle. A dream come true that I didn't even know I had. And here I am, part of Milwaukee, you know, uh, just getting ready. It's, we've been here for about uh, four hours now, but it only feels like 20 minutes. Like, it's just constant go, 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 one stage to the next. Uh, we've got a hot dog and a couple waters in between there, but uh, for the most part, it's fucking bug lights and headbanging metal, baby. Let's go. Well, Franny, you mentioned dreams come true. When I look at you, you look about half a Make-A-Wish while I'm over here looking like <laughs> half a Shriner. Just excited. So, Drewmies, as me, I'm going to sign out as a Shriner. I got my little Make-A-Wish child. We'll check in with you after Imperial Triumphant. Oh, my God, dude. Franny, we were fucking lit up and feeling good for Imperial. <laughs> oh, and my God. We kind of alluded to this, but their whole gimmick is spraying people down with a, with a bottle of champagne. Those who want to take part of their ceremony and they popped the cork and did something special. What did you do? Oh, what did I do? What did little yeah. old Franny do? Franny fucking 
power pushed his way up to the edge of the stage and told everybody, I came all the way here from St. Paul. I'm going to get mine. All right. And I got up there. I got my fucking champagne communion. And not only that, I got that shit on tape too. Head over to the Instagram. Check it out. You'll see, uh, you know, Franny getting just goosed with fucking cheap ass champagne, baby. Franny. You are such a fucking spark plug. I will feel like, I mean, you did so many things over this three day weekend that are now written in DOD lore and drinking from the Imperial triumphant Sabbath, their holy chalice as they pour that champagne down your greasy gullet and you filmed it. You had the presence of mind to film it. And that's going to be a theme <laughs> folks. He filmed a lot. Okay. <laughs> Frank filmed yeah. a lot of shit. Um, I was doing mostly band coverage, but he was doing the the live Forrest Gump living his best life coverage. So head over to Instagram, watch him drink the bubbly. You're going to see a couple other things, I think, too. So, Franny, I, I loved seeing you do that. And I tried to get showered. I was out of range. I was one row back from you. Oh, man, you know, when the when the moment strikes, you just got, like I said, you just got to fucking push your way up there. Assert your dominance. I asserted my five foot seven dominance over some some other short guys. And you know what? Like I said, I got mine. And that was that was truly something to behold, too. Like I I heard about it and uh, I got to experience it live firsthand. Like that was that was Something that's going to live in my memory for the rest of my life, no doubt, no doubt. And yeah, the the fact that I had presence of mind, like you alluded to, is kind of shocking because, yeah, we we were pretty well in the bag at that point. Well, my only other burning thoughts from day one, aside from the fact that, you know, we were just tired and it had been a long day. For me, I, I want to hear your thoughts. I loved Ghost. Ghost is something different. Uh, at this, sh- at this festival was so much death metal and so much thrash metal. Any band that represented a change of pace, such as Imperial Triumphant or mm-hmm. Ghost, who I'm about to talk about, like that was like a golden opportunity for me. So I really enjoyed the change of pace bands. Ghost was one of them. Dark Synthwave. Uh, I would say... Definitely the proud recipient of the cigarette and eyeliner award for uh, most <laughs> yeah. goth looking performer of the oh, weekend. Yeah. And, and I mean that in the most like loving way, like he looked awesome. He rocked out. I loved ghost. What did you think? Oh, ghost was great. Ghost was great. That was like the first time I've seen like a dark synth wave uh, performance in, in person. And yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. I just remember vividly you and I both being right up at the stage, just fucking banging out having a grand old time and just, you know, I remember alluding to the fact that if it sounded like you and I were in like a white Lamborghini, just cruising down the highway, like we were right in the pocket too. It was, it was, it was fantastic, baby. We had so much fun. We had so much fun. And you're right. We were right in the pocket. A 1988 Nintendo racing game cresting a a pixelated (laughs) skyline, seeing a city (laughs) off in the distance and ghost blasting across some shit kicking speakers. It was phenomenal. It was, it was really great. Franny, I like don't know if I had like a, a fugue state or a stroke, but when I and I, I only had three, four <laughs> beers. Well, according to the audio, at least five, like an hour before this moment in time that I was talking about. But I don't remember much else from the night. Like I was so tired. Like I, I didn't catch Napalm Death. I, I did see Revenge, but I, I was ready. to I had to piece the fuck out for Biohazard. Did you catch um, Napalm? I know you talked about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely caught Napalm Death. They fucking crushed. They fucking crushed. They were in the uh, mid-sized venue, and I had to take a little breather at that point, so we caught the balcony seats, and we were sitting down while enjoying Napalm Death. But, yeah, they were they were fantastic. And some of the messages that they were spouting, you know, in between songs were just really incredible. Um, I won't go into detail, but, like, it, 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 it's, we got too much stuff to cover. But it was, it was great. It was a fantastic performance. Uh, Warbringer, saw Warbringer also. They fucking crushed. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, I agree with you. It was kind of like a fugue state for a while there. Like, it's just a big blur. But I remember Napalm Death and, uh, and uh, Warbringer. And, yeah, I do remember seeing a little bit of Revenge also. But, yeah, at this point in, my, at this point in the night, it was just, it's just a fucking blur. I was just so exhausted at that point. So I, <laughs> yeah. I, I got out of there, did not catch biohazard. That's not, you know, they're not knocking them. I just, by the time every one of these days, headliners were performing, you got to think like we have expended so much energy and, 
Um, no, no one's out of control with partying. So like we're, we don't have like that, you know, that, uh, liquid energy that some of the people were having at that time. So like for me, most nights I'm, I was pretty shot up by about 10 o'clock. Oh yeah. Um, so that closed out day one before we even go into day two, I just want to call out the crowd and specifically there's a couple of kids that were really prominent all weekend thrashing the fuck out, thrashing on the stage, uh, to suicidal tendencies. There's one kid who, like, I think you mentioned it in one of these audio clips who was challenging you for the annual uh, crowd surfing championship. Like, you crowd surfed a lot, but this kid was crowd surfing all the time. It was wild, man. It was wild. I first saw this kid come up during Sanguisigabog. You know, he's just getting floated along like he's on a cloud because, he, you know, he probably weighs like 45 pounds. And he'd get off. And he'd go right back to the back of the crowd and do it again. And I was like, this little son of a bitch is going for my belt. Uh, he totally beat me, though. He was constantly crowd surfing. I'd never seen anything like that before. It was nuts. I just loved that this this show, you know, maybe it's due to its history, Jamie Josta bringing it back. But there was a lot of veterans of the original festival, which went on for like 20 years before it you know, went kaput. And as a result, these uh, men and women they've all aged and some of them have had kids. And now, so at this festival, you had a big variety of fans and some people bringing their kiddos. And yeah. um, I was really glad that the, the just generally speaking about the crowd, just a really good positive vibe from everyone. I, I don't know, Franny, did you pick up the same sort of sense? Oh yeah, it was incredible. Like I did not see any like hostility or anything like even hostile vibes or anything like that i did not see anything like that throughout the whole weekend and i was genuinely surprised about that because you know when people get tuned up on on booze and uh, other substances they can get a little feisty and get a little testy but there was not uh any ill will nah. towards anybody it seemed and it was it was really really fucking cool to see that it, it was just a lot of good times a lot of good vibes from everybody it was it was it was pretty magical just super chill. And I mean, I, I've always had that. Exp I've, I've went on 70,000 tons of metal, which of course is the floating metal festival. And I had the same experience of like just camaraderie. And that's the global tribe that is heavy metal. So I, I just want to shout out that if you are on the fence of, on going to a metal festival or Milwaukee metal fest, like that's one of the big beyond the music. It is the camaraderie. And that was excellent at the rave. Uh, I also though, you know, you talk about there wasn't like a lot of people like, you know, too out of control. I, I'm really thankful for that. Like I've gone to metal shows where oh, yeah. that really bring out like the tourist sort of metal fans and people get just way too boozed up. Well, I don't know if it's just like the right mix of people or the fact that beers were like $12. I was really thankful not to be surrounded by like odd overserved people. I didn't see hardly any of that. Oh, yeah, I agree. Uh I've been to plenty of concerts, as you alluded to, where people just get fucking blackout drunk. Um, and don't get me wrong, there was plenty of people there that were heavily intoxicated, but, like, it wasn't to the point where I'm just like, oh my god, cut this guy off or anything like that. Like, it was... I, again, I was really surprised that it wasn't it wasn't insane that there was a bunch more people, like, passed out in a corner or something like that, or pissing on their own selves or something. It was crazy. Well, later we're going to have some audio of a little bit of bodily functions uh, <laughs> coming up pretty viciously near you and T. So stick around. Uh, you're going to want to hear that. You know, I think uh, next year, one thing I want to do, though, is play maybe uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest crowd bingo and oh, give some yeah, sheets baby. out to our friends. Like, and it's definitely going to include, you know, someone projectile vomiting is going to be one person. <laughs> I feel like somebody dressed as either like an anime character or like a nun We'll have to be a character. I know oh, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to have somebody with like a, a t-shirt cut, not just from the sleeves, but also as like the neck hole, like an entire <laughs> tank top made with the shirt. That's going to have to be, yeah. you know, maybe a, a fat kid that's thrashing on stage, like an animal. That's going to have, I love that kid, by the way. What a oh, fucking yeah. cute kid. But yeah, just crowd bingo. Yeah, I don't, I don't catch them all if you can. They're pretty slow moving. So oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be fun to do. All right, Franny. So we we returned to our Airbnb, got rested, had a beautiful breakfast, and day two opening with Phobophilic. And Holy goddamn, Christ. you know, we've been high on these guys for a while. Like they've been, they blew us away when we saw them at the Turf Club in St. Paul. And I even, I look back at our Instagram messages and I had sent them 
a, a, a message months ago about how much we were looking forward to seeing them again. And they opened day two with guitar tone from hell. I mean, this thing was chock full of death metal that you could not sleep without. But this band in particular, Phobophilic, crushed and opened the show, I think, better than anyone did on day two or three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think day two opening with Phobophilic could not have gone down any better and it couldn't have been a better choice because I feel like day two was genuinely the death metal a la carte serving that you could have gotten like there was so many incredible like death metal ba- like it, it's again it's hard to put into words but i feel like day two was was the uh th- was the day of days in my opinion and opening with phobophilic was just incredible it, as you said the guitar tones these guys put out were fucking insane it was that whole room was pretty goddamn packed like everybody was having it it was it was so much fun seeing these guys well, think about this. Phobophilic was booked against Undeath for the second half of their set. And I, I, I know you snuck out, I think, a little before me. I stuck around for Phobophilic's entire set. That's how good I was I was seeing. Or that's how much I enjoyed the performance. So Phobophilic, Guitar Tone from Hill, loved them. And of course, we're going to have to talk about Undeath. What, what, are, what are your, uh, you know what? I was going to ask your <laughs> thoughts. But let's just cut to the floor and see what you might have to say about this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fresh off the heels of an absolutely scintillating performance by Vermilion, day two of the Milwaukee Metal Fest. We've got Franny, multiple time, two time crowd surfing champion, fist bumping Alex Jones of Undeath on the way to the floor. Franny, how the hell are you? Yo, I'm fucking fantastic. Let me tell you something, Milwaukee Metal Fest in almost a decade absence has been delivering so far, hour after hour, minute after minute, it's been unreal. I mean, we're talking Vermillion, Undeath, Terror, Macabre, fucking Frozen Soul's about to kick it off here, like, this shit is unreal. And and if I may add, I'm not sure if I'm stage three cancerous because I saw malignancy earlier today, and they absolutely blew the roof off the building, so Franny, I think, suffice it to say, it's been a absolutely electric festival so far it's been it's been fucking terrifying in the best way possible really I, I so much metal in one day it's hard to fucking fathom uh what's all going on i mean you're bouncing from venue to venue and it's fucking just amazing franny how clutch has the franny pack come in throughout the festival whether it is surfing through the crowd or trying to fish out money for a hot dog how much has it come in what kind of factor has the franny pack played well i'll tell tell you what uh, as i do my album ratings i will rate the franny pack on a one to five scale and the franny pack gets five out of five franny packs for being so utilitarian <laughs> it has come in so fucking clutch it breaks the goddamn car basically <laughs> well through me's tonight we've got anthrax we've got suicidal tendencies and you can bet we're gonna come in hot with a review of everything that's to come and maybe just maybe a few field gorilla reports from the stage and from the crowd so until then neck record signing off well franny of course the audio wasn't very long but the bottom line you fucking crowd surfed and fist bumped alex jones the double bicep given front double bicep posing alex jones i mean god damn you're just a beast you're a fucking spark plug and a legend it was so fucking fun dude i i told these guys to get me up there get me up to the stage and i was up there crowd surfing and uh, it was it was just incredible, man. I got to fist bump the shit out of Alex Jones, and I felt like his double front bicep power get transferred through his fist into mine when he did transferred that. you like directly into your body, your core. <laughs> you know, I said you're a, a fucking legend and a spark plug, but you know what you also are. You know what you fucking also. You I, know what yeah, you are. I, 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 you're yeah, a fucking yeah. chromate dyed in the wool. <laughs> Try look at you, you, yes, you you'll do a little defending of the faith, but you're a fucking chromate. And I, I can't wait to hear what the tribal elder has to say about your adventure. So, oh, man. I mean, you're fist bumping Alex Jones and filming it. And and, and that's going to be something that I think we're, we talk about for years to come. Um, so, yeah. What, what Anything else you can add about fucking undeath? Oh, man. It's, God, that whole set was wild. Like, uh, yeah, like you said, they were opening against Fo- uh, Phobophilic. So I was able to catch some of Phobophilic and then caught some of Undeath, too. And, man, I just wish there was this gap between those bands. But uh, ugh, it was so much fun. But if you want to see how much fun I had, head on over to the Instagram where we're going to put the video up there. And we're going to have a Franny face reveal. Wrecker is going to stay shrouded in secrecy. But we're going to do a Franny face reveal. This video 
is too fun not to put up there and put out to the rest of the world. You want to fuck? You talk about a season one fucking cliffhanger. We're fucking pulling the mask off a luchador here. I hope you fucking realize (laughs) the gravity of the situation. So fucking a Franny fist pumping Alex Jones. Uh, It's it was a TMZ video. It should be on World Star Hip Hop. Fucking fantastic. Well, Franny, we also checked out Mirza. You know the famous illness, but (laughs) Mirza, just a theatrical silly band. I'm gonna go ahead and bestow upon them another wrestling call out, but I'm gonna give them the it's still real to me damn it award for the most theatrical performance because Mirza they had people dressed up as like all sorts of horror icons they had Freddy and Jason mm-hmm. and I don't I they should have had Pinhead I think I missed Pinhead but seeing Freddy on stage just gave me goosebumps because in our all uh, go, going back eight months ago you know we're so we talk so much shit about our own lore but me seeing <laughs> Freddy on stage was making remember the time I said I wouldn't just fuck Freddy I would marry him <laughs> so seeing <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Freddie on stage, I, I was kind of feeling butterflies in my stomach. But for any Mirsa, they had all these theatrical folks dressed up. It was really cool. And that led into, for me, uh, a, a very special band from Wisconsin that took me by surprise. So I'm going to go ahead and bestow the following band with the, the Peter North I Didn't See That Coming Award. <laughs> and this goes to Vermilion. Vermilion was... Yo. My God, the most death metal death metal band at the whole goddamn festival. What, what say, Franny, what did you think about Vermilion? Oh, my God. These boys, these fucking boys. When you bestowed the I Didn't See That Coming award upon these guys, I, I cannot agree more. It just completely, completely took us by surprise. And it was a fucking show of shows right there. These guys fucking killed it. Ah, uh, man, I... I'm just finding myself kind of reliving that moment and reeling and just being like, holy fuck, where the hell did these guys come from? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, uh, just the riffs that are breaking one's neck. Outrageous. That's the bands I live for. Now, maybe not the most original, but goddamn definitely crushing. You know, oh, when they yeah. talk about when when uh, these eggheads get together, they try to figure out, you know, gray matter or what, what precipitated the Big Bang. Well, I got to say the universe listened to Vermillion and lost its goddamn mind. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> life That's i mean they were fucking yeah. massive heavy as a black hole vermilion they're maybe like a band that's still on the rise just fine i mean these, these are old guys they were old guys and i say that as an old guy uh, i loved them i can't wait to see them again i i wish they would call i haven't heard from you vermilion <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling it's tell me if i'm doing something wrong vermilion <laughs> I will try to change for you, Vermilion. I will change. I will change for you. Oh, Fucking fuck. fantastic band. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Cash Money Millionaires, Vermilion, check them out. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we also, we talked about, we talked about Might House earlier, the biggest bastard in the land. Let's cut to him, get a little day two thoughts. Drewmies, I'm, I'm here to bring you a special live report. We're coming with a absolute heathen of a man. He can just still... Big as the planets, guarding Asgard. Mighty old man, what have you enjoyed most so far of day two of the Milwaukee Metal Festival? So far, day two has been phenomenal. Uh, my favorite part has probably been Undeath. For some reason, the lead singer has this charisma that just puts a, I don't know, spell on the audience. It's fun to watch him interact and direct the crowd to do his bidding. Straight from the man's lips. Have you been surprised by the distinct lack of carnies in the audience so far? See, here's where I think you're wrong. You're just not looking hard enough. They're everywhere. Drewmies, this is the type of this is the type of coverage you tune in for. We give you a full chair, you need only the edge of it. Stick with us as we journey through night two. Franny, there's been a lot already in day two, but you, you and your uh. fucking Book of Heavy Metal D.O.D. lore. You've already drank from the cup and floated to the Jones. But now, (laughs) not only did you see Frozen Soul, but you fucking scored a fun little interview. I mean, how the fuck did that happen? And I can't wait to hear it, but give us a little bit of a rundown. Oh, man. So, uh, after Frozen Soul, this is a little while after Frozen Soul, uh, 
They put on their set, which, by the way, was fucking crushing. It was just an incredible set. They did an amazing job, as they usually do, with a little cameo from Alex Jones, who did, like, some vocals for a song, which was also crazy as fuck. Um, But I'm getting ready to go grab a drink, and I see fucking Chad Green, the front man and singer of Frozen Soul, going up to the bar, and I start striking up a conversation with him. I'm like, hey, man, can I buy you a drink? And he's like, well, the beers are free, but I'll take a shot with you. And I was like, yep, okay, let's fucking do this. So I, you know, bought a round of, like, this lemon shot. I don't even know what the hell it was. It was delicious as hell, tasted like lemonade. It was incredible. Uh, and that, I feel like, gave me enough uh, enough courage, liquid courage, to ask him Love for, it. like, a 30, the 30, 60 second interview. And he was like, fuck yeah, dude, let's go. And I was just like, oh, 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 oh man. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was so shit. Like he said yes, and my hands were he just said like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, he said yes. <laughs> my hands were fucking shaking. I got weak in the knees. Like started having a blackout for a second. Like you know, just the room came closing in on me because like, I was just so excited. Like <laughs> tunnel vision. Oh, oh my god, it was insane. Dick moving. And oh I just remember him say, you know, because I think it was uh, Anthrax or Suicidal Tendencies, one of the two bands were just getting ready to do sound or doing sound check, so it was a little loud. So he takes me back to where, like, uh, you know, the some of the bands hang out or whatever. And as I'm walking back to this little area with Chad Green, I see, I see Wrecker and and House look at me, and they're like giving me the what the fuck face oh we were like oh he's definitely jerking him <laughs> off like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh man but uh we'll cut we'll cut in uh that yeah why don't we uh, let's, let's go let's take a look into what we got here all right this is uh franny with the druids doom podcast i'm here with uh chad green from frozen soul chad how does it feel to be part of the milwaukee meta festival after almost a decade of not being around it's fucking amazing. I've only ever seen videos of this fest, so for me, it's like a milestone, you know? We play with some of my all-time favorite bands, like, it's such a cool, relaxed place with badass vendors. It's fucking sick. I'm super honored. And then, uh, so, uh, out of all the bands that you've seen today, I know you performed as well, and you fucking crushed. Out of all the bands that you've seen today, who is your favorite, and uh, who are you most looking forward to as far as the weekend goes? Um, I'd say my favorite so far is most definitely Phobophilic. Absolutely. We've been on tour with them, but tonight they sounded insane. They played first on the stage we played. They fucking crushed it. Obituary just got done playing, and they were fucking insane. So, yeah, I'm stoked for uh, We're staying tomorrow, too, so I'm stoked. Yeah. Uh, so since you're staying tomorrow, I think you said you're done with touring. Uh, who are you excited to see for tomorrow? Definitely excited to see Gate Creeper. Oh, fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Well, thank you very much, Chad. Sure appreciate you doing this, and uh, I hope you have a good rest of the weekend. I ho- hope you have a good off-season for touring. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. All right. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I- so the bottom line, Droomies, I don't, we don't, we've always kind of talked about whether or not we want to do interviews, but if we do, that's our fucking first, and Franny, <laughs> the big balls of steel, I love it. You did a fucking fantastic job, and how fun. What a cool memory. Oh, man, it was wild, man. Again, that's going to be one of the many things that just lives seared in my memory for the rest of my life uh, from this weekend. It was it was wild, dude. It was wild. You were just you were just a golden boy the whole fucking three days. And (laughs) I just love it. And yeah, day two. I mean, there's a there's so much to talk about. I was just macabre. They crushed from uh, I I want to say I know they're from Wisconsin, but I forget the exact town um but yeah a macabre is a fantastic death metal band loved them raven i gotta say the award for least likely to need viagra goes to fucking raven <laughs> i mean these dudes they've been around since 1974 but they're absolutely vital they're full of vigor and they put on they put on a performance that won over everybody like let me just franny raven they don't need any blue chew chewables because they they were fucking <laughs> stone rock putting out a performance i'm like are these guys 30 or 70 i i I, saxon uh, going back to in one of our episodes we talked about they got the metamucil fiber plus plus award for album (laughs) i mean they they fuck they also are a band who also was up there but just goes to show much like raven that time equals experience equals i can fucking play and raven crushed i loved them did you did you get a chance to catch into that I, i lost track of you i think at this point yeah, I got to I 
I think I caught maybe like one or two songs of Raven, but then I think House and I ended up going see Ripper, which was like kind of like oh, another yeah. new wave yeah. of British heavy metal style band. And I feel like they were like battling for attention because like, you know, there was people like swip swapping from both rooms to check them both out. It was pretty wild. You know, uh, Ripper fronted by uh, former Judas Priest singer Tim Ripper Owens. Uh, I mean, that that was an amazing show, too. Like, I had a lot of fun with that because uh, as we alluded to earlier in the show, it was kind of a break from like the dingy, dirty death metal. You know what I mean? Like that. It was just like some, like I said, some new wave of British heavy metal. Uh, just a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. I mean, talking about a lot of fun, I saw a, a cup of four young dudes who looked like they were straight out of a time machine during Raven and were thrashing so goddamn hard. And it just made me so happy. Uh, I, th- these are like a few of the, the people I knew I had to talk to. So let's cut to the floor and get a little perspective following Raven from what I like to call four boys that look like the spirit of 1986. Here we go. <laughs> All right, Matt Cracker here at the Druids of Doom, and I'm here with the Quadrants, a fucking diehard metalheads who just blew it up for Raven. Yeah. Boys, tell me, how did Raven make you feel? Fuck yeah! Ah! I don't listen to them a ton, but I'm going to now. These guys fucking rip, man. I saw the empty fucking pit, and I knew I had to go in there, man. I, it was there's no one in here. There's, there's like no four of us. I saw the kid was... with the action his shirt and immediately got a little <laughs> excited, man. The energy was low, and we brought it to the top. Ah! Ah! Fucking rules. Oh no, it was excellent. Fucking Raven. Yeah. You boys look like you're straight out of 1986, and I fucking love it. Hell yeah. Who are you here to see this weekend? Uh, suicidal tendencies. Yeah. An obituary. Anthrax. I saw Anthrax at Summerfest with so Wade. So Wade. Yeah. Are you fucking them too? Yeah. yeah, dude. It was excellent. It was wild. I know. Obituary's on in like 20 minutes. Okay, get ready for that shit. Get ready for that shit. For all these listeners who might not be here at Milwaukee, would you say you come back this year? Yeah. Yes. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> came here in 1999 interviewing a bunch of the bands. Oh, that's sick. He met Anal Blast and he was afraid of uh, Don Decker. Oh, <laughs> I, that's a justified fear, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently he was just a little cuckoo in the head. But like... Well, boys, I can't thank you enough for your time. You're fucking magnetic. You had all the energy in the world. I'm so impressed. Thank you. Thanks, man. Neck wrecker out. Fucking A. Those guys... Those boys got it. Those boys, all these bands were talking about Vermilion, but I set, set them aside. These boys got it. These four boys got it. And they, Franny, I remember being them. And I remember talking to old heads and being like so infected with this blood disease. We've always talked about that is heavy metal. And it's so cool to see four young dudes thrashing out together with the spirit in them. I just loved it. Yeah, I can't, you can't say much more than that. Like, I, I wish I would have got to see these guys firsthand because, I, man, I, I know I would have been gabbing it up with them till the cows come home. But good guy, oh, yeah, man. they just sounded, they just sounded like they were living, living their best life at this in, incredible festival. Well, what more can be said? Uh, a lot of great characters, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of heavy metal. F- was flowing on night two. Uh, uh, Ripper, I loved him. I'm glad you brought him up. Fantastic performance. I mean, I I know we're leaving so much on the cutting room floor, but we don't want this to be six hours long. Uh, day two for me was my peak. I loved all three days, but day two was my peak. Uh, I was biting my lip and quaking, just ready to go. Oh, and yeah. Go, I did. Um, obituary oh, yeah. crush, suicidal. I, I was I was comatose up in the balcony, but I liked what I saw. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, uh day 2, man, fucking A. Day 2 was just wild. Like you, you said that it was it was the peak. I I I 100% agree that day 2 was genuinely the peak of the of the Milwaukee Metal Festival. It was so oh god, so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> But yeah, come come for come time for suicidal anth- uh, tendencies and, and anthrax towards the end of the night. Yeah, I was I was I was bushed. I mean, just so much to call out. Violence I heard was a fantastic performance. I mean, I can't wait to talk about day three because some real deep highlights were there. Oh, but day boy. two, I wish I was again. I'm I'm just gonna out myself as a baby. I I could not make it to see much of Anthrax. I know you boys did, but I was just shut the fuck up. And I've seen Joey Belladonna so many times, but. Yeah, you know, a wall-to-wall, pandemonious, harmonious, ceremonious day. I loved it. <laughs> Franny, any other thoughts on day two coverage? 
No, man, no. I think we pretty much got uh, the the peaks and the highlights of it. But as you said, yeah, there's just so much. There's so much being left on the cutting room floor. But yeah, it, it's too hard to pack it all in there. But yeah, day two was fuck. <laughs> day two was bananas. And before we go and give a uh, just a, a quick rundown of day three, I want to shout out the uh, the champion of the entire festival for me. Like, I- I'm so impressed with the people of Milwaukee. Uh, they could not have been nicer, whether it was people oh, in yeah. the neighborhood where we were staying or all the staff that ran the event itself. Like Milwaukee is full of a lot of fantastic people. And the area we were in um, was pre- predominantly African-American, a black community. And they were so welcoming to all these people of all different backgrounds and just extending love uh, and respect to everyone. So I don't know, man, I just, I have a really high opinion of the people of Milwaukee. Oh yeah, they, every eh, literally everything about the city of Milwaukee that we got to experience was just incredible. Like you said, the staff that worked the Eagle Rave Club, like from the servers to the security, uh, to the people that, as you as you alluded to, that we experienced just walking around town, uh, hitting up a couple of the little shops. Everybody was so incredibly nice and and welcoming. Couldn't have been more thankful for that. One hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's so flattering when a city is just so um, so cool and so chill. So we had a great time in Milwaukee, and and it really surprised me because we've talked a lot about like the outskirts of Wisconsin and those towns that <laughs> yeah. have just one stoplight. How you have to be careful. So we we weren't sure what to expect, but we were. It was good to see that Milwaukee is the baby face of Wisconsin because all these outlier towns, you gotta be you gotta be fucking careful. But <laughs> I, I really do fuck with Milwaukee, and I want to go back catch a Brewers game maybe next year. Um, but you know, lots of festival highlights and for any survival guide for festivals, you know, I'm a little bitch and I try, (laughs) I try to eat relatively healthy and you're all planning meals. You're like, how about about two pounds of bacon? I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, dude, no, like I want to have like some fucking Greek yogurt or something. You know what? I'm a dumb fuck. And once again, you have proven yourself to be the teacher because that bacon (laughs) is how you want to start your day on a festival, a day following moderate drinking and a lot of standing and and sun bacon what do you think oh, tell man, me about that... bacon <laughs> what is the deal with what's the, the bacon deal? what's what's the deal with low sodium bacon oh man no it yeah took the, the bacon... nitrates out of my bacon <laughs> the uh the breakfast that we had for day two just really came again it's just another clutch decision because we made the bacon we had a fuckload of eggs we had some toast and we had some little hash browns i made a sandwich smashed it all together a la military eating training um and that laid an incredible base for the evening but then we had <laughs> leftover bacon that we put into our sandwiches because we brought sandwiches to the venue because you know trying to save a little money when we can put it in the sandwiches and it was even better it was clutch as hell dude is there fucking anything better than just a well thought out well built sandwich my god no there really isn't there i really mean isn't. we go out to the car and we it's it's a journey to get out there but by the time we got out there those sandwiches were calling us and yeah you know that's part of the fun next year when we do this i want to put some respect on your name when it comes to planning that <laughs> menu because you this when it comes when it comes to planning the menu, this boy's got it. And I love the bacon. <laughs> so that set oh, us up shit. for any for day fucking three. You know, it, we're a little we're a little haggard at this point. How are you feeling heading into day three? Oh, man. At the start of day three, I was feeling all right. It, it, I was feeling all right. We got, uh, you know, some brunch, had a bloody uh, again, set, kind of setting up a good base. And uh, but towards the end of the night, holy buckets, was I just... Ugh, I was tired as hell at the end of day three, baby. You know, the first, I had to kind of get myself up for this as well. And I, I did rebound, but, you know, Hath was the first band I, I was really ready to listen to and oh, ins- absorb. God. And, and when the, by the time they came on, I was in the right sort of, you know, mode. And I mean, I think they said they're from Jersey, uh, either Jersey or New York. I should know this, but Hath was phenomenal, more great. More great, just death metal. Yeah, Hath fucking killed it, dude. That was another band that I hadn't really experienced uh, in a in an at home setting, but man alive, did they fucking crush it in the live setting. You know, this is an award I've given out in the past to Bewitcher, uh, but the the slipped disc award for most <laughs> hard 
pounding, mosh pitting fucking animals is going to go to High Command, who I also saw on day three. I mean, for me, High Command really fucking stole the whole day. I, they were vicious. Oh, God, yeah. High Command was fucking nuts, dude. High Command, that that pit that was going on in that small-ass venue was violent in a very good way. I mean, there was so much energy being just, like, shoved around there. It was insane if you want to see what we're talking about head over to the instagram where we got some uh, video of high command just killing it up on stage they were incredible they were genuinely incredible man so much to talk about on day three um day two uh, stole my attention the most but high command as a performance this side of vermilion that it also really caught me by surprise they're a band i'm i'm gonna absolutely absolutely be paying attention to moving forward franny oh, um, i mean I know you're a big sucker for this style, this crossover thrash, this punky, thrashy crossover style. And um, yeah, I, uh, I I will say there's there's going to be mistakes at a festival. And my biggest regret, and this is a testament to how great the weekend was, because my biggest regret was just stepping away from this set. I mean, I left this one early. But I, I wanted to run upstairs and I regret it because they were something special anyway. Yeah, those those mistakes are bound to happen. Those, the, you know, E three on the fucking shortstop. You know, we got we got that was my error. I fucked up. But I think oh, what I was man. doing is running upstairs to catch uh, the the following band who I gotta say deserve the award uh, for garbage pale kids, least dignified fans. And you're gonna fuck. And you're gonna eviscerate me. I'm not talking about the band was fantastic, but the fans pissed me off. Because they were, they had too much heat. And I had to get out of the kitchen. But oh Sangwa Sigabog, Sangwa fucking Sigabog, a pit the size of Hurricane Andrew. It was insane, dude. Good thing they put these boys in the big venue because, yes, as Wrecker alluded to, that pit for Sangwa Sigabog was fucking enormous and it was brutal. I mean, I stuck around for from opening to close, and I was physically beat after that one i needed just to sit down for like a good solid 15 minutes and just get my bearings back because that shit was insane man that shit was insane and i mean you're down at the milwaukee police station looking at lineups because you got physically <laughs> fucking assaulted yeah, I mean, dude, it, was, it was you know and the fucking annoying part to me like i know i'm a curmudgeon at this point you know there's just sometimes you just don't you this boy don't got it and i did not have it <laughs> yeah. at this point and i was two rows I was two rows back from the very front of the stage and there was about 10 rows behind me. And so, I mean, normally that means you are insulated from a mosh pit, but that pit went extended all the way to the first row. The only people that were exempt were those on the rail. I can't Negative, believe sir. that. <laughs> Even no. the rail started to get it. I, I ended up moving my way up to the rail thinking I was going to be a little safer there. But yeah, no, there was no safety at the rail even. It was it was wild, dude. It was it was wild. It was it was a, it was incredible. It was a really good show. Like it, the set was awesome and I had a lot of fun. But yeah, like I said, I was just physically assaulted afterwards. I mean, <laughs> another example of my uh, steadily declining cognitive abilities and my age <laughs> is I'm sitting here like an old man yelling at the clouds and telling kids to get off my grass because they're moshing too fucking hard <laughs> with a lack, a lack of decorum. But concert survival, know where you're standing. And I did not know where I was standing <laughs> because Sanguis Sigabog bucked all trends. They're an outlier. No one moshes to the rail. But they did. Oh, so, man. you know, I'm giving them the Garbage Pale Kids Award for least dignified fans. But on the on the flip side, that's also a compliment. That's also saying this fan base was rabid and they were ready f for the heat. They wanted all the smoke. And I was the problem. I didn't want the smoke. <laughs> I didn't walk my old smoke. ass. I got my ass out of there. I'm trying to fucking shoot videos here, people. Don't knock oh, my fucking two-year-old <laughs> iPhone out of my hand. It's, I can't afford a new one. Oh, man. Yeah, that was... Uh... I, I didn't even dare bring my phone out for that set because I knew if I would have, that fucker would have gotten toasted. So I, I kept it safely in the franny pack. But, oh boy. Yeah, that was a lot of fun on that one, man. Well, I was in better form for uh, the band who I'm going to give, again, Fanny Pack Union Local 651. Thank you for sponsoring the Land of Lake Awards, the Good Land Awards. <laughs> uh, the, the award for the most invasive mold spores. 
That's gonna go, <laughs> that's gonna go to Mulder, of course. It's gonna go to Mulder. I you know, I've seen cover art from these boys, fantastic cover art, and I knew they would be a death metal band. I didn't know exactly how fucking awesome they would be, but I was blown away. Fantastic riffs. I ordered the album when I got home. I'm looking for Hell a yeah. t-shirt. I'm looking for some sweatpants that say Mulder on the side of it because their spores are deep in my body. These spores are in my person and they're now part of me growing. It's part of this illness, this blood disease, Franny. Mulder, I don't know. Get it. I would say, Franny, do you fuck with Mulder? But I think you miss these boys. Miss, miss these boys. But uh, you know, I'm not sure. Were you there? No, no. I think I believe they were going on the same time as uh, Sanguis Sigabog. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't catch any Mulder. At all. <laughs> That's right. There's a little narrative here that makes a lot. I fucking worm my way out of that place after about four <laughs> songs. I'm gonna go check out Mulder. Loved him. It was oh, the right man. decision for for oh, my yeah. body. For, for your body and your soul, you know, it was the right decision. To, you know, yeah, Mulder was just chicken soup for the battered mosh pit middle-aged man's soul. <laughs> I oh, loved man. him. Oh, yeah, it was great, man. It was great. Well, main stage sound, I was, you know, it was hit or miss for me. But after the burial, uh, I, I wow. thought, I mean, wow, just, a, just that's a band. You know, sometimes when I see Immolation, I say that's a professional death metal band. When I see after the burial, I just think that is a professional heavy metal band oh my god and so so fun too and not only that but they're local boys uh you know they say minneapolis uh but house will correct everyone that says otherwise and say they're from the wbl uh (laughs) you know i i you know potato potato tomato potato whatever what have you uh all in all yeah all in all they it was they did an amazing job i always have fun seeing these guys uh especially when they play lost in the static i just lost my shit i handed off all my stuff and i went straight to the pit for that song because it's something that i cannot miss uh, to go into the pit to one thing i thought was really cool and i think this bonded us to frozen soul uh, because they did something similar once but after the burial mid mid set had a really positive message about needing to stay in the present moment that they, they dedicated a song to anyone who's lost somebody, which, you know, plot twist is all of us. And Mm. their message was just really cool. I really appreciate like the way they approach their fans and just, um, yeah, that's the kind of thing that makes you feel like you're part of something at a show beyond just the music. So I really was touched by after the burial. Um, (laughs) I was really touched after the beer. I don't know what I'm <laughs> Is this a story or a, is this a testimonial? I, I don't know what. Sh- sh- show me on the doll. So I liked After the Burial a whole lot. And I also really liked Gate Creeper, who I thought as part of a day three, just general wrap up before we go into Unearth and some madness there. But Gate Creeper, uh, another tone from hell if there was a band who challenged phobophilic for best tone the only one i could say would really be gay creeper i loved them i'm trying to remember if i caught any of them i may have been outside taking a breather you were I... plotting your spot for on earth at this time oh that's right yeah 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 i had to get there for on earth but man um well, we're gonna talk about that in a second but jesus age <laughs> uh. i mean on earth they had to know you know in terms of booking the booker behind this decision, it, this is devious, and I like that they did this, but they put on Earth in the smallest room. And on the surface, maybe some people would look at that and say that's a booking oversight. Fuck no, I'm saying that was absolutely intentional. That was about building ex- exclusivity around one performance because it was a, it was totally, I mean, absolutely get the fire marshal because there's a problem in here packed. Oh, yeah. And yeah, Franny, you yeah. were in the thick of it for On Earth. Yeah, it was it was nuts, man. And the fact that they got booked into the smallest venue for that show is exactly why I'm giving them the literally too big for your own britches award. I mean, this was insane. It was insane. These guys could have easily filled, and I'm t- I mean, plum filled the medium venue. Probably could have done a pretty good job in the in the big venue too. But they put them in the smallest venue, and it was insanity. There was not a spot in this place to stand unless you were a bartender. There was literally no place to stand. 
Well, Freddie, I was able to like just barely get in like Indiana Jones. I'm pulling that head under the falling rock, trying not to lose my hand. I was able to get in about three, uh, three rows from the, from the, uh, the exit. And I stuck around for about the first quarter, my first four songs, something like that. Um, but I remember after the show that you and Might House, uh, you were calling this the performance of the weekend. Do you still feel that way? Yeah, I th- I think I do, man. I genuinely think I do because uh, Imperial Triumphant again, just inc- incredibly revelatory. But as far as like the energy and the heat uh, that was put forth by a band, I think Unearth for me completely stole the show. I mean, I was right up on the stage. You know, this small venue. There's no gate. There's so many magical moments that I had from this band. You know, I- I've listened to them a lot before. I got an. I get this was my second drumstick. Uh, that I got from the weekend I collected. And not only was it my second drumstick, this was my first stage dive. A stick got thrown, bounced off the lead singer, went back towards the drum kit. I said, fuck that. I'm getting my stick. I am getting my stick. I hopped up on the stage, ran over to the kit, grabbed it, and then I just fucking launched myself Superman style. Well, I, I've i missed all, almost all of this. I'm sitting outside catching my breath, and then you come outside, beat fucking red. And I'm like, what is going on? Let's hear what you have to say. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. Franny, a mere 16 feet from you, a woman vomits, her friends look on, and you just got a drumstick in the middle of an unearth to tell us the story. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. I didn't even notice the girl vomiting. I'm so hopped up on adrenaline right now. I'm seeing fucking red. Like, I'm just ready to keep on fucking keeping on, baby. Oh, there she goes again. Oh, <laughs> Franny, she's a geyser, and you got sprayed on like a geyser just a night ago. And here you are again with a fucking drumstick. <laughs> oh, today. Uh, you know, I'm going two for two on the drumstick hunt today. Uh, my record is impeccable, although I will say that this little eight-year-old boy Boy, crushed my fucking crowd surfing record. <laughs> this kid crowd surfed like 19 times during Sangwa Singabog and fucking another 13 for after the burial. The kids are nuts. I just want to go on the record and say Franny is a fucking undeniable force this whole three day period. And I wish I could have captured this the first time he told the story. This dude's he's beat red. He's glistening. He looks like he's in the middle of a hardware store shit. <laughs> And I can't wait to see what comes next. <laughs> At the end, uh, the culmination of Milwaukee Metal Fest is upon us, and Franny's still writing DOD lore. <laughs> Neck wreck around. <laughs> I can't, I can't fucking believe it. I'm just sitting there. You're walking out beat red. Behind you, a woman's vomiting. I'm like, I need to I jam my hand, grab my recorder as fast as I could. I'm like, I got to get footage of this. Oh, man, it was so wild. When I came out of that unearth set, I didn't know if I... Because I was drenched. I was drenched. And I didn't know if it was from sweat or if it was from beer that was getting hucked around or a combination of both. It was... It was insane, man. It was insane. Uh, It was just, like, so surreal to hear you talking about this against the backdrop of, like, this woman. Like, I I can't (laughs) paint a picture. Like, imagine someone loosens a fire hydrant. Like... She was projectile vomiting <laughs> right behind, like 10 feet away from you. And you're, you're hopped up. Everyone standing around you is cracking the fuck up. It's just a golden memory. And, um, shout out to that lady, because if you're going to puke in the middle of a crowd, it was a very courteous projectile vomit. Like she had no food in that puke. It was clear. <laughs> and she, uh, gen- she just gingerly turned to the side and just like, just outrageous. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't even, Yeah. Like you said, I was so jacked up on adrenaline, I didn't even know that was happening. It was it was crazy, dude. It was it was nuts. Oh god. You know, pretty <sighs> much the last thing I can think to say in terms of just spreading the DOD lore from this three day period. And we saw cephalic carnage, and they brought a fucking blow up inflatable orca whale, and they were tossing it around the crowd, and and we were sitting up in the balcony, giving our resting our dogs, and we're watching fans do the do si do with it and ride it like a horse and go across the ground like a gecko. And here's Franny beckoning, beckoning this first floor to toss that toss that whale up, and eventually they fucking hurl that whale up to you, and you. <laughs> You fucking just chucked it like a spear down at like you viciously threw it back oh, and yeah, everyone man. erupted. The whole crowd popped. 
I was, uh, you know, they got it up to us finally, and I just, just fucking did, like, the ultimate warrior, like, rope shake with this thing, you know, just fucking <laughs> celebrating it. Yeah, and then I was trying to I was trying to harpoon somebody down in the pit with this free willy, and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. And not only that, but they had a fucking satanic sax, man. Lest we forget, we have talked about the satanic sax and how incredible it can be in a metal performance and they had a fucking saxophonist live on stage it was fucking wild we need more sax and metal i feel like the metal community undervalues the sax as like a grimy party instrument you you, you get some bassy production on a sax it sounds Ooh, phenomenal baby. oh baby can't agree more could not agree well more. franny uh, by this time on day three I think I speak for both of us when I say we were shot up and and we admittedly uh, we've seen Lamb of God a- at that point. I, I really wasn't there for them. I'm there's no hate. I went there for the death metal. And uh, yep. for me, that was a wrap. And there's just so much more I could say about this festival. The merchant, the, the merchandise. I oh. mean, Spaceballs, the flamethrower thrower got nothing on the merch they had. Oh, my God. Um, we both walked so out there with much. some goodies. I know. There was so much. It made it like I'm kind of glad there was so much because it made it made buying something hard. You know what I mean? Like, oh god, I could have spent literally a day down there just looking at all this merch. It was nuts, dude. Yeah, you know, we both we both in terms of like board games definitely have like acquisition disorder, and we both borderline <laughs> yeah. having acquisition disorder when it comes to metal. Oh yeah, I was able to show a reasonable amount of restraint. I picked up a single record and um, grabbed a shirt for me and the gal, and I got the fuck out of there with my finances mostly intact. Hell I do yeah. believe I I will financially recover from this, which I'm glad <laughs> yeah. about. And Franny, oh. I don't know, man. I think um. I think I would give the Milwaukee Metal Fest a straight up a 10 out of 10. It was it was one of the best times I've ever had. I couldn't agree more, man. I could not agree more. This is easily a 5 out of 5 on the Franny Pack scale. It genuinely was an incredible weekend with some incredible people. Um, you know, it, it it's it's hard to put it all into into words, really. Um, I'm just excited as hell for for next year when they come back because I definitely would uh, recommend going and I definitely would do this again. It was, it was just an incredible weekend round and round. Well, I'm so looking for, like, we've already basically called it. Like we, we always, Franny and I, we always want to do at least one metal fest. And now I would say we've got a pretty strong blood packed with might house yeah. to also join us. And, and I think we're also going to likely see our good buddy, Matt, the rat and TSE at all these festivals, but we're going to be back, baby. We're going to be back at this festival next year. And yeah. I hope that you all can make it. It's a hundred percent worth your investment. hundred percent fun. Thank you to Jamie Josta. My goodness. What a bear. This must've been to organize this, but oh, yeah. I, I, uh, you boys pulled it off and, um, you know what, Franny, who knows how the show is going to grow in the meantime. I think they've been sharing, uh, all sorts of updates um, from the, the show, and we were lucky to be one of them. Like, we got to collab in the future. Maybe next year we will, but in the meantime, we're going to be we're a little bit, little more battle tested and ready for the for next year's edition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to take the lessons of uh, of this year's trip and apply it to next year's trip. Uh, we will probably forget all about the gas station food once again. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it was uh, a lot to learn from to to prepare ourselves for the next festival, whether it be Milwaukee Metal Fest or a different one, for sure. I mean, the tricky thing is like Quick Trip is like the sirens calling your ship to the rocks. I mean, like it sounds <laughs> you pick up those smells and they may be horrible and laced with chemicals, but like it's your opioid rece- receptors are going off. And <laughs> yeah, oh, again, yeah. Hanna-Barbera cartoon just boink, 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 and you're like on your tippy toes <laughs> drifting your way over towards it. <laughs> Uh, so yep. Franny, it's it's been a fun ass first season. Uh, later this summer, you and I are going to be going to the Mad with Power Festival, which Hell is yeah. all about pinball and power metal. We've got Lords of the Trident, High Spirit, Seven Kingdoms, and Unleash the Archer. So when we return, you know, mark 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 your calendars. It is written in stone. It is foretold for a mid to late August return, season two. Franny, Mad with Power Festival. I think we're fucking locked and loaded after Milwaukee. Oh man. Oh yeah. I'm so, I'm so fucking jacked, especially for a couple of these bands that uh that I've been really frothing at the mouth to see and not only that but all the fucking pinball baby. All the pinball. Ugh. 
You know, a little bit of just self jerking off here now. Just shout out to all our hardcore Droomies, man. We love you. Shout out to all the people that are now written themselves in lore, whether it's East of Edina, Matherat, TSC, Mighthouse, Telekinetic Overdrive. You boys, you boys got it. We want to hear from you again the next time you play a show. All of Australia, fucking Richmond, Virginia. I mean, the list, New Mexico, Franny, the list goes on and on. Oh, yeah. Um, I just want to call it out before I pass pass the torch to you to close out season one. Don't forget about this fucking cliffhanger of a season one finale. Head over to our fucking socials. You're going to want to see Franny as he is just delighted floating on cloud nine to fist bump Alex Jones. You're a fucking legend. Oh man, it was so, it was so fun. I literally can't. It- just wild experience, man. I can't believe I got that on tape. <laughs> like, who still crowd surfs day? and films it? Like, you're you. This is how I know you're a generation before me because you're fucking <laughs> filming yourself crowd surfing. I'm like, this boy, admittedly, this boy's got it. For Franny, <laughs> you got it. Oh, man. Well, uh, you know, once again, Droomies, it's been an incredible first season, as uh, as Wrecker alluded to. I just want to thank everybody that's made this show possible. Uh, t- to all of our super fans, t- Craigo, for all the way down in Australia, um, everybody in Canada, Germany, Brazil, Mexico, Australia, you guys are all killing it. Uh, Chicago, Richmond, Frankfurt, all the way over in Germany, Ashburn, Brookings, you know, you guys have been really helping the show grow, and we really appreciate you. Um, and not only that, but thank you for to the significant our significant others because they they're allowing they're they're putting up with this shit, taking time out of our you know our weekends to record the show. So that means a lot of uh, means a lot to both of us too. And uh, yeah, make sure you keep an eye on the socials. We're going to be constantly posting stuff up there, both the Instagram and the uh, Twitter. If you got any questions or just kind of want updates, you can always write us in at our Gmail, druidsdoompodcast at gmail.com. And uh, make sure you come back for season two when we talk about all sorts of insane shit, uh, kicking off with the Mad with Power Festival. Uh, So, yeah. Uh, With that being said, make sure you stick around for the next episode of Druids of Doom.